Welcome to Allies or Enemies. I'm Jess. And I am Sean. And today we are talking about Aircon. Because we just got back from four days in Harrogate at the UK's Game Playingist Convention. And it's all about playing games. So we play demo games, playing games from the library, playing games as part of events, playing games with strangers, and playing games with friends. So we're going to talk about some of the games we played. So the first group of games is games from the library. And they've got this huge library right in the middle of the event. And it's got, I don't know, hundreds of games, maybe thousands of games in it. And you just go there at the start, you get a library card, and you just get to get games out for free. And so we always play a bunch of those. But one of the ones I was very excited to see in there was Last Light. And Last Light is a 4X game that plays super fast. You can play the whole thing in like about an hour. Yeah, and it's simultaneous play. So it plays in about an hour, even if you have a lot of players. It looks really cool. There are these marbled looking planets and the board has these different sections that like shift around at the end of each round. And so it's like slowly sector by sector, you're getting closer and closer to your opponents. Yeah, it was really interesting that how it shifts, and you're always close to your opponents because there are not that many sectors, and especially if you have four opponents, there would just be people all over the place. But it was really interesting how I like could not remember where things were once they turned. It really messed with my head, but like in a good way. But I do think, we played this at two, and I do think that this would probably be a much better experience at a higher player count. I feel like that's probably where this one would shine. Yeah, I am interested in trying it with more players. One that is specifically for two players that we played is Dwarf Romantic The Duel, and I love the original one. So I was really interested as to how they took this really chill, charming, cooperative game and made it competitive. And how they did that is you each have the exact same set of tiles. And one person takes a tile, flips it over. The other person has to find the exact same tile. So you are building your towns individually, but using the same tiles and seeing who can do it better. Yeah, and that was one of the tricky. So Jess was the one who was just casually flipping them over, and I was the one who had to lay everything out and find them and track them down. And I'm a pretty organized person, but still, it's it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. And whereas the original game has basically no setup, you just get out piles, shuffle them, you're good to go. This one has a lot of setup. And I don't know, it feels like, I don't, I just, I love the chillness. Anytime you talk to someone about Dorf Romantic, they're like, oh, I really like how chill it is. This one gets rid of that part, which is one of the best parts of the game, and adds just a lot more stuff that you got to do. It still is, like, it's a solid game, and I think if this was the only one I would have played, I would have been like, oh, that was pretty cool, but... It just, it's its a lot more work. Yeah, I much prefer working with you than against you mm. in Dorf Romantic. Another cooperative game that we played was Horrified Greek Monster. So we had played this once at Essen, and we saw in the library to play it again, and we just love Horrified. And we loved it so much that we ended up buying it. Yeah, we were always going to buy this because we're such fans. And this one, I think, is the perfect, this is like the Goldilocks of the Horrified. So it's a little bit heavier than the first one but doesn't have quite as much kind of upkeep as the um, as the American Monsters one. I still do love the theme of Universal Monsters probably a bit more but I think mechanics wise this is probably the best horrified. We also got a chance to play Ready Set Bet which is one I've had my eye on for a while and if you're not familiar with it it is a horse racing and betting game. So these horses are racing and you can have someone who's rolling the dice and moving the horse along or you can use an app for it and everybody else has to try and place their bets but it gets pretty frantic because once three horses have crossed the line that's it all bets are off. So you have to place them by then. And there's incentive to place them early. Yeah, because once you play it out, it's locked. It's locked into that place. But if anyone else plays it out, then that's also locked and you can't also play there. So there really is a like, you want to play on those high bet multipliers, but you don't want to be wrong because you're going to lose money or you're not going to win money by betting on the right horse. So this is a really fun tension of when you bet and you're watching the thing. And 
I have heard our friend Neil, who did the, the announcing of the horses and did a terrific job, was telling us later that there is an app, and the app does a great job of you know doing all of the work for you, and especially if you can have a TV up. And I could really see this being great in the right situation. I think a convention is 100% the right situation, though, as well. But it, it really was fun. But you would need kind of five, six people to make this one shine, I think. We spent a lot of time as well in the exhibitors hall and got a chance to demo some games. And so one of the games we demoed isn't out yet. It's coming out later, and it was from the Hachette booth. And it's called Decal in French, but it will be called Slides when it comes out in English. And it is this like super small box card game. You have four cards that are four by four grid that are upside down. And then you, each of you flip a card, put it in the center, and you go around and you have to draft one of those cards to add it. But your goal is to group cards of the same number together because then they don't score anything. And it's golf rules lowest score wins. And it was actually a really interesting puzzle. Yeah, because also when you take them, you have to slide other cards. You can't just put it into an empty spot. You have to slide all your cards. Like one of those little kind of square things that you like had when you were a kid, those little puzzles. It's that same sort of idea. And so that is really interesting, especially later in the game, because you've got groups you like, but now you have to slide them, and now you've shifted them out of the other things that you have, so you've got to think about it. And I think everyone at this table, like um, Flavian, who works at the Hachette booth, had grabbed us and was like, oh, we got to check out this game, and then he grabbed a few other people we didn't know and forced them to check out this game, and all of us were like, okay, what is this game going to be? And at first I think we were a little like unsure, but by the end, everyone was really involved in this incredibly simple number matching game. And I think that says a lot because it's, it's one of these games you can explain in 30 seconds, you can play in 10 minutes, but there's a lot more decision making than I expected. So I'm, I'm excited for when this has kind of its full release. Yeah, the sliding really can throw you off. Another game that we checked out at the Hachette booth was After Us. And this is one we've checked out on Board Game Arena a whole bunch. Because I love primates, you love Planet of the Apes. I love Planet. We cannot overstate this how much I love Planet of the Apes. And we liked it okay on Board, board Game Arena. But what a difference it made playing it in person. It has art by Vincent Dutrait, and I think seeing that in person helps. But also, I think just the like grabbing the tokens and really seeing the cards match up properly, all of that was made such a difference in person. Yeah, it's surprising too, because sometimes you'll play a game on BGA and you play it in person, and you think, oh, I kind of like that it did the math for me. I kind of like that it did the work for me. And this is not one I expected to shine in person, but... It really did, and I think one of the cool things is we're playing with three people, and just that simultaneous play, and everyone's you know figuring it out at the same time, but it made for this puzzle you're constantly playing. So it was definitely, like there's a few things people complain about, that it is definitely multiplayer solids here, there's no doubt about that, and the theme's definitely tacked on. Both of those things are true, yet I still enjoyed it, because I still like that tacked on theme, and I don't mind multiplayer solitaire, so... I personally thought it was a pretty solid game, and I much preferred playing it in person. Yeah, it's a great little engine builder with a race to 80 points, and so it can be tricky as to going for like lots of points now or setting yourself up for more in the future. We also checked out one that Sean had promised <laughs> that he wasn't going to check out, and that is Star Wars Unlimited. Yeah, I was really like, I'm not going to play this. Nothing can make me play this. And then the table was empty and we were walking by. And I was like, well, let's play it. Uh, but the good news is it wasn't really for us. I guess that's good news because that's going to save me a lot of money. So this is a, a collectible card game. So it's got booster packs and all of that stuff, which I do tend to avoid as much as I can. And so we gave it a whirl. And I think for trading card game fans, and I know I talked to a lot of people who liked it, you might like this, but we don't really have a background in that. We haven't really played a lot of Magic. We haven't really played a lot of any of this sort of thing. And so, and it not really having the deck building aspects. We were just playing with set decks. But I did, it just didn't grab me. It wasn't 
it, I'm, I'm glad to say, so I'm going to save a ton of money on this, but yeah, this, this one did not sing out to me like it did to some others. Yeah, and I think it is just because we aren't the audience for it. It probably does everything the trading card games do. You had a couple different arenas you were fighting in, like the ground arena or the space arena, or you could just attack each other's base, and we just went for each other's base. So it fell a little bit flat, but I think more because of our unfamiliarity with the system. Yeah, it might have been, but I would, so if you're interested in that maybe just check out a channel who's more into that sort of thing and you will probably get a better sense of it but it's not going to be the one that wins us over and gets us into trading card games another big group of games we played is games we played with friends and particularly games when it gets later on in the evening and they're just light and silly and really fun and the highlight i think was rafter five and so this is an oink game where the two boxes stack on top of each other and then you have these little different shaped meeples and you have to take one of the cards which is a little plank and you lift up a person put the plank down and add a treasure token but the plank always has to overlap another plank and so what that means is you get this giant overlapping base that extends beyond the boxes and then things get exciting yeah this is a bit like if Rhino Hero went out instead of up and it's really fun. This is this was like definitely the bell of the ball. This was sold out at all of the booths. Everyone had it at the start. It was sold out at all of the booths at the end. We got one of the last copies that we picked up on Saturday. And everyone was playing it. But when you were playing it too, everyone was watching it. Anyone who wasn't playing a game around you was watching because it's this terrific balancing game. And you can see it building out and you think, well, that's definitely going to fall. That's definitely going to fall this time. And we had one that went so far. And when our one friend picked it up and it fell, everything, every single thing fell off of the box. And just the, like, oh, that went out from everybody. It was like two tables around in all directions. And it's just so much fun in that exact same Rhino Hero way. I love those games. And another game that was similar to that was Viking Seesaw. Mm. And so this is a, a seesaw and you have an assortment of different shapes and different weights that you have to place. And on your turn, you have to put it on the side that's up. And you're hoping that you don't tip the seesaw because if it tips, you have to take an additional item that you'll then have to put out. Or if things spill off, you have to take everything that spills off as well. And that was, again, really simple, but really fun. Yeah, I love these games that you can, they're so good for late night, that you can explain in like three seconds. Because that's it. It's just, yeah, just put one of your things on the other side of the seesaw. That's all of the rules. And it was so fun. And it's just another one. It's like, basically, it's a kid's game for adults. Or for kids, I guess. And uh, yeah, we we played a bunch of these. We played a bunch of both of those games. As well as there's this other bowling game. that, And they came in these crazy cigar boxes. The bowling game and the, uh, the Viking ship game. Really, really fun games. And another great convention game, and we saw a ton of this, is Blood on the Clock Tower. And so every single hall always had a circle of Blood on the Clock Tower happening. And so we participated in the game, even though it's not your favorite kind of game to play. But it was fun to play with our friends. Yeah, this is, if you don't know Blood on the Clock Tower, well, first of all, this has become a staple of Aircon. There's... Like, at any one time, there are three games going on of this all the time. There's even more when you get later into the night as well. But this is basically Souped Up Werewolf, more or less. I know some Blood on the Clock Tower fans are going to get really mad at me for that, but but it is. And some people are the demons, some people are the townsfolks, but unlike Werewolf, everybody's got a role. And when you die, you still get another vote, you can still talk to people, so there's no full player elimination, which I like. And I liked in this one, well, I kind of liked it that I went out early, which meant that I didn't have to, like, argue with people that I'm not a demon, because that always stresses me out. But I went out because I tried to put Jess up for the vote, and she was a role that just automatically killed me. And so by that information, everybody knew that both you and I was good. And that was a huge relief, because mm. I get really stressed during this, particularly if I am a minion or a demon. I do not like lying. And so having most of the game where people are like, oh, I know you're good, was a bit of a relief. But it's a great way to be able to play with, like we kind of got to play with all of our friends one big game, because it's like 12 people can play this, and I really do like that about it. 
we also joined in on a whole bunch of events and one of them is Strike, which is a favorite of ours. It is a super simple dice game and they do this big strike tournament. And so we signed up, we joined in, I got out right away. I think you made it through to the semifinals. The semifinals or the second round, whichever way you want to look at it. I do prefer to say semifinals. I was almost a champion. Also, I just barely won the first round, but it's it's always so fun. In the finals for this, they brought out this big like kitty swimming pool and these giant dice that they played with. And that was really fun and really silly too, but it's it's just such a great game. And the Watch It Played team hosted that. They hosted a bunch of the events. They always do such a good job. There are also a couple of quizzes that we took part in. One of them was super hard, but it was supposed to be because it was just like this multiple choice, like fast guessing kind of one. But the other one, the fail forward one, I thought was really neat. Yeah, and so that is based on you get more points if more people get it wrong, and it gets multiplied by the number of judges that get it wrong. So if all of the judges get it right, you get zero points, but you can go up to like 250 plus points. I ended up with like 65, so I only got the easy ones right. But you got like over a thousand points. Yeah, I must have come close to the win because the winner got like 1,200. The winner was this little girl too. I, I know she was helped by her parents because there was kind of a family playing it. But I thought, oh boy, I would have really looked like a villain if I won that one. There's another thing that people won was the raffle. And so the raffle is always a staple of Aircon. They made 10,000 pounds that they split between two charities. And we did not win this one. We won it a couple of years ago. We didn't, we would have liked to win it, but also it's nice to spread the love. We would have felt bad if we won it again so soon as well. And somebody who won it also, I really enjoyed that he was like, oh, my wife's going to kill me. Yeah, you win a whole bunch. There were eight different tables and each mm -hmm. table was just like stacked with a ton of games. And all the games are donated by publishers and different like board game stores. It's incredible like how much they raised. We also spent a lot of time in the indie and playtesting zone. So that's where people can playtest their games. Also some like indie publishers were demoing games all day long. And we got a chance to play one of the games with Box Meeples, which is another YouTube channel that we've been meaning to play with for ages. So that was great. We played Spokes, which is a game that is designed by someone from the Netherlands. So it's about bike racing, but it was a super interesting like puzzle like shared board where you have to take a wooden piece and replace it with one on the board then you can follow along that color as far as you can and try and do three laps around the cycle track. Yeah it was it was really cool and there was another one that was another wooden game and this was a like a handcrafted wooden game was board and I've met the designer of board before because he's in a London playtest group but I'd never had a chance to actually play the game and it was interesting. It's a fun little uh, area control one versus one game. I also got to play test a whole bunch of my games. So I had a bunch with me. I got to play four different ones and some of them multiple times. And thank you so much to everyone who took the time to do that because there was some stuff that I learned wasn't working. There was some stuff I was very happy was working. And yeah, it was, it was great. I got to play my 80s game, my fast food game, my Cowboys game um, and it was just it was so helpful to be able to fix some stuff to see some other stuff that was working and just thank you so much for everyone who helped out with that process. And for some of the times while Sean was playtesting, I got a chance to join in other games. And Aircon's really great for that. They have these lightsabers, and you just have it there with the light on if you're looking for other players to join. So I managed to join Age of Innovation, which is one we've been wanting to try for I'm so jealous. <laughs> quite some time. We really like Gaia Project. We really like Terra Mystica. And this looks like Terra Mystica, but has a little bit of more complexity like Gaia Project. And I really liked it. It was just one play. So I can't say for sure, but think it may have been my favorite. And the only way we're going to find out, I guess, is to buy it. So we're just going to have to. And the other one you were playing too, I was also really jealous of because it looked really cool. Yeah, so this was a Cosmos game that is coming out soon and it's Nunatuck. And so it is a card set collection game, but it's interesting for how you get your cards because you have to put this ice block out on the board and where you put it is what card you get 
but there's also considering the points that you get for building out your ice block and it makes this great pyramid at the end it was really fun and that is it that's our thoughts on a bunch of games that we played at aircon most of the stuff we played we really liked a couple things we bounced off of but that's always going to happen i think the highlight really was seeing everybody especially all of our friends from london that was just terrific and we were pressed this year for the first time and that was great and if you want to check out we had a few little extra photos and stuff that we put over on instagram as well yeah and thank you so much to everybody who said hi to us that was lovely the organizers of the convention did such a great job all of the volunteers are amazing so thank you for an incredible four days thank you so much for watching please let us know in the comments if you went to aircon or what your favorite gaming convention is Please like, subscribe, feel free to check out our Patreon. There will be a link in the description. And as usual, hopefully, we'll see you next time for another game.